Good afternoon. Welcome to the Friday, December 15th, 2023 Public uh, Acquisition Disposition and Construction Committee meeting. My name is Mike. I'm the Executive Director. We ask members of the public keep their comments no more than two minutes per speaker. And with that, I turn it over to the committee chair, Mr. Aaron Chilich. Hello, everybody. Uh, well, members of the committee, including myself, myself, and myself, <laughs> and all of our staff uh, who are here today. Um, uh, I think it's mostly an update call from staff, from Owen and Kyle today, um, not much else to vote on. Um, so how should we, is there an order people wanna go in? I mean, Mike had said, maybe start with the pilot and like just all the Legacy Cities um, updates. Um, I can't imagine there's been many updates since, since the board meeting a few days ago, Owen, uh, but I don't know if there's particular things you wanna talk through today. Yeah, sure, I can I can jump into it. Okay. Um, so, I think uh let's see we I'm just reminding myself um yeah okay so I think I had reported at the board meeting on Monday that uh, 169 Hurley Avenue had certificate of occupancy. Um, but so since then, 124 Franklin Street uh, has certificate of occupancy. So that is the last of the five pilot houses um, that we started back in 2020, I guess. So. Congratulations, Owen. <laughs> <Congrats. laughs> that's a big that's a big accomplishment. Congratulations. Um and uh so um let's see if I can share my screen here. Yeah, that so th this is also you know this this phase of construction on this house is this experiment we've talked about before. This is our uh, zero change order um, job, and it uh, seems like there's there's a variety of things why this particular phase of construction it worked out for that. Um, but just uh, you know, as we as we wrap up here, we are looking at. Um, uh, Construction, you know, wrapping up uh, about a month ahead of schedule and with no change order. So that's cool. That's and awesome. uh, definitely, cool. definitely worth, you know, continuing to explore that idea uh, in different ways. Um, again, there's different reasons why that worked out for this particular house and situation, but yeah. Um, uh, over at, Rogers, we, you know, we're still, we're still kind of maintaining the same amount of um, the sky behind schedule there, though it's, it is nice to see that we've, we have, you know, paint on the walls and the ceiling and, and we're seeing the electrician working there at the same time as the HVAC people are working there at the same time people are putting up trim. So it, it really is energy going into the project that I, I think, um, you know, that's a house that I don't want to, I don't want to talk about naively, like about this completion date. Um, like I'm, I am aware that there's plenty of work to be done before then. And I want everybody to know that as well, but um, the GC is going to submit a, a a new construction schedule to kind of catch us up on what is going to happen between now and then. Um, but you know, he is also he is also partner in the project and under, understands why we're wrapping it up then, so that the house can be successfully sold and we don't have to keep paying uh, construction loan interest. So, is there out of curiosity because I, I know you said that for Rogers, we're going to go over 100% contingency, you know, as allocated for the particular building, but not for the project overall. Um, it, what what have you guys found over there that's caused kind of so much, like so many change orders? Um, 
I I would uh I would characterize it more as a um like less less about the condition of the building and more about the um amount that we're able to uh about the tightness of our uh construction documents and what what we're what what things we're able to detail and making sure that we're detailing exactly what it is that as an organization we're asking to happen there so i think those are I mean, those are those are lessons that we've learned from previous projects, and that we're you know con continuing to try to um, build into, for example, the legacy two houses. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I think I think it's 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 the kind of thing that I think makes what we just did with the Franklin street possible where it was like oh actually we've we've uncovered a lot of things that we might want to talk about here and if there's any anything that's murky let's let's figure it out and talk about it ahead of time and so that's something we're doing with lake city houses is making sure that we're eliminating any of these uh areas that have insufficient detail that makes sense and a diplomatic answer. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, there's something else. Uh, let's see. Uh, so, like, like yeah, legacy is too. I mean, legacy is too planning. Is that um, in terms of pipeline stuff? Murray uh, is, I guess, part of that. Oh, well, I'm not really a part of that, actually. I guess uh, the main. The main thing to touch about on Legacy Cities 2 uh, is, I don't know, I'm not really sure at, at what point is the appropriate point to like address this thing of, um, you know, path forward with the GC, but, um, you know, I know that Mike and I have been discussing it, um, or we've been discussing it. It's staff meetings as well too, and um, it you can correct me, Mike, if I'm mischaracterizing things, but but it seems our seems like our recommended path is to make it a make it the Legacy Cities two houses an open RFP. Uh, at this point, you know, we know we got the four houses, and at somewhere between now and when we release an RFP, we'll we'll make a call about whether it's four to six houses that we're including in that. But um, but the main contrast, I guess, is to joining up with a GC partner um, in the deal. So Mike, I don't know if you want to expand on more on why. Yeah, curious as to sure. <laughs> sure. Well, um, and Owen and I had talked about, and as you mentioned, we talked about like at our Monday meetings or group meetings. Um, how would this work oh, with the partner? The, can you guys hear me? Sorry, my phone just yeah. said something. Yeah. Okay. Like a joint venture partner like we've done for the Legacy Cities 1 uh, project. Now, the, the term sheet on the project has evolved since we applied to the program, and it no longer requires that you have a partner. Um, I think for many good reasons, we partnered with uh, our JV partner, and it went incredibly well. But that not being a requirement anymore, uh, the only determining factor to confirm is that we meet the number of points to qualify as a project that's on the current term sheet. And the curious question is that you, in order to receive 10 points, which is what we need, we must have five to 10 buildings. And so my question to the state earlier this week that's still unresponded is if we have four buildings, do we still get those points or not? And so that would be something maybe to revisit. I feel like they will understand that they want to have more closings under this program and we would be able to retain 100% of the developer fee, for example, and uh, receive the return of our equity possibly when we structure the financing and just sort of make it a normal development deal as yeah. opposed to what we did for, for legacy cities just to get it closed. Yeah. 
Yeah, so that was that was the other piece of it. I think that Owen's alluding to is uh, how many buildings will we have, and that's a very important question, not just for the, the term sheet, but for issuing the RFP. And mm -hmm. so we're still waiting on a timeline for that judicial action, or rather, something the white smoke, as it were, when they pick a new pope or whatever. For the, are we going to end up with six buildings? Should we issue an RFP for six buildings, or are we? Is it going to take too long? And should we wait? And if we wait, we're, we're risking bumping up against the spending deadlines for the legacy cities or the, the LBI2 funding. So all of this to say, Aaron, it's kind of all interrelated. And I would imagine, you know, our current plan, Owen, is to be able to issue the RFP early February, late mm -hmm. January. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. but, okay. By the time we get back in the next meeting, Aaron, I think we can hopefully have some more focus and at least oh. make a recommendation on what we're doing with the RFP. Okay, I mean, that's, I mean, purely from a, also just from a developer fee perspective, <laughs> it makes some sense, so, yeah. yeah. I mean, we, we, we come with all the buildings, we come with all the equity, we come with all the subsidy, <laughs> we do all the work on the development side. Yeah. There's a case to be made. Do, do we know if, if, um, if um, Maida are interested in continuing to do this work? Yeah, they they are, and uh, and I think the probably the main the main thing we leave on the table by not pursuing the partnership is just that we don't get to say to each other now, okay, you know this is in the schedule, you know you're you're keeping the spot in yeah in, you're in locked that part into of the year project starting starting in June right so yeah. right now we just say to each other okay. You know, he says like, "I'm interested," and I'll respond to your RFP if you put one out. And we say, "Okay, sounds good. We'll talk to you then about yeah. it." <laughs> but how will we do? I mean, it, I know there was a question you guys have been talking about of like, if it's six, if it ends up being six, whether to do two GCs, right, um, and split yeah. it up. Um, I'm I'm kind of proposing that that these. These four that were, you know, let's. Uh, I'm. I would say I'm operating on an assumption at this point that these four go out for RFP in early February, and that the last two are kind of like the plan is up in the air. So I'm. Okay. I'm thinking more that these four move together and maybe move with um, one GC, and that those. Abby and Stefan are are ones that we on their own path. Yeah, are on their own path and potentially with their own GC. They're kind of near each other too, uh, or we could sp split them into two GCs and tr try out two people. But um, that that would be my preference. I think is is to have the four that we're solid on move forward with one GC. Okay, let me. Knowing that we have other houses that on an indeterminate timeline that we'll be able to try out other people. Yeah. That's all I have to say about except Murray, whenever you get around to talking about that. Are we able to segment out those RPs for the Legacy City's closing? Like would they want us to have all Jesus? TikTok. You're breaking up a little bit, Kyle. Do it piecemeal. Oh, sorry. Can, can you hear me? All right. No. Yep. I can. I think. Sorry. Sorry. Is no, this better? Yes, can you hear better. me? Yeah. Yes. Um. Would we able to? Would we able to segment out the RFPs with the Legacy Cities closing? Would they want one GC yeah. or two GCs all lined up at closing? I believe Syracuse. Who still hasn't closed had proposed multiple developer partners. Like there's some precedent for it, but it would be twice as much work on the closing to do them. Um, I don't know. I, mean, I guess we should probably ask that question as well. That reminds me to follow up with the state on my prior question. And just ask that. Hard to know. Uh, 
Um, so I guess Third Avenue. I mean, finance for Lego Cities one. I'm not sure. I just want to throw it out there in case. Yeah. Yeah, nothing new to report. Yeah. Uh, there. Get another wreck so in. So in terms of in terms of Third Avenue, you, I, you said at the board meeting that there's some uh, significant drainage issues, stormwater issues. Is it is it worse than kind of it was? I know you had previously kind of showed us a map of the typography and said this is what they're telling us, but it sounds like you might now have a, a com more complete, um, some more complete feedback. Yeah, and, and I don't know, significance the, the right word. It's something we had always anticipated that there would be yeah. some stormwater issues here. Um, and I think the estimates we've seen for addressing the storm work are within what we anticipated. They're not crazy outrageous to, to do that. It's more a question of how do we integrate that into the site mm -hmm. and what does it mean to for what we are um, capable of building on the site with mitigating stormwater issues. How, how does that you know affect the amount of housing we can build there? Um, so yeah, I, I think it's both been, you know, a little bit of a obstacle, but it's also helped us in kind of narrowing the scope of what's possible with this site. And we're just kind of playing, I don't know, Mike, if you agree, we're kind of just waiting to see what maximums we can fit on the site given the constraints required that the civil engineer identified. Um, yeah, but again, not stuff that is catching us completely, you know, by surprise. Um, and I don't think anything that's going to significantly impact the scope of the project and also can potentially be an amenity for the neighborhood too. Like this is something that needs to be addressed and we are kind of in the middle of, what is it, like 50 acres of drainage on our site. And, uh, you know, that's something that to address that, it might be a, a positive amenity for everyone in the neighborhood. So, mm -hmm. you know. And to add down. to that, there's, there's, there's 50 acres draining towards our site. We actually, now that we've gotten into the civil engineering aspect of it, he's mitigating any drainage that would come onto the site by moving it through the system he's proposing. So it's, I know that that seems like a subtle distinction, but I, I think where we're at now, as you mentioned, Kyle, is, is trying to come up with the best stormwater management plan uh, in terms of programming that we possibly can. I don't know, Aaron, if you're interested in this type of thing, but I brought it to the design committee to say, here's some examples that we have from around the world, and here's some of the things that I'm thinking. I, I think it can be, to Kyle's point, like the, I think it can be a focal point on the site. Do a good job. Yeah. yeah. Right now, the cost estimates that we're looking at from the civil engineer for the system he's currently proposing, which is passive gravity fed drainage, is $150,000. So it's okay. not that $2.5 million that we were wondering about for the Mid Hudson Momentum Funds. You know, how yeah. much would we need to deal with this? There's certainly more site work that goes into building yeah. this, but. Can I, in terms of you guys thinking at the moment, I know now that, like, now that the habitat, the habitat mortgage is, um, you know, <laughs> going the way of the dodo. Um, right, right. Uh, um, is, 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 it, it, have you guys conceptually been moving more towards thinking about this as a, as a potentially a bigger rental project or an entirely rental project? Or are you still trying to, are you still thinking about trying to structure a home ownership component into it with, um, with this, you know, uh, credit is due or whatever product they have at that point in three years. That entering in the interest rate into the Excel model will be the biggest decision. Mm -hmm. You know, your assumption for the interest rate that will play yeah. into everything. I think where we're at now is not making any decisions as far as the um, the type of ownership structure that we would have on the buildings, you know, rental or, or co-op condo, uh, fee simple or an HOA. But what we need to do now is to get feedback from the architecture and planning folks as to, okay, so if we're putting the stormwater management system in this location based on passive drainage and offsite infiltration and kind of the uh, permeability of the soil, which is pretty wet on the eastern side of the site because it drains down. Okay, so we've taken that off the table. This is what's left, which is the western part of the site. Given the current zoning options, what can we build 
and then that will feed into what type of ownership structure will we have and do we feel yeah. like we can absorb this much do we feel like there's a significant risk what is the interest rate is a big question but then working with owen as well to try to come up with pricing assumptions per square foot or yeah. something and building typologies or building types that's the next phase of this and that's to, uh, unfortunately it is a slow process but fortunately it is a thoughtful intentional process and so we're kind of hoping to come back uh as soon as it's possible and say like here's the typologies and here's what it looks like as a rental here's what it looks like as an ownership what do you you know we'd like your feedback because we feel like we've got something rough okay if that makes sense yeah, mm -hmm. yeah it makes a lot of sense cool we'll see we'll see yeah, it's uh, exciting stuff y'all are doing. Um, Murray, I guess Murray really is the last thing then for today. Oh, and here it comes. <laughs> so these these aren't you know these aren't your prices for these paths though the, these are real example prices. Um, but, uh, as I said, it's trying to give you a sense of scale, um, for the different paths that I've heard that the organization wants to consider for the, for the house. So, right. We don't own it yet. So option three, that's not listed here is reject it and don't ever think about it again. Okay. So that's easy. <laughs> um, and comes with its, you know, with its own political costs. But uh, this option, full house demolition, uh, it's, it's kind of a complicated site that's up against its neighbors. It's a decent sized house with outbuildings and junk and demolishing it without cleaning out and testing for asbestos means assuming the presence of asbestos and, and following those rules, um, which is why you end up with estimates like this. And mm -hmm. if you read the quote carefully, uh, there's a long list of exclusions in the estimate, <laughs> including, including that this is based on kind of like a weight assumption and additional weight will be charged at whatever a ton. So uh -huh. you have to, assume that um you're not necessarily not a fixed fee at least you know this quote we've seen so um mm -hmm. if we do proceed with the work it have it has to go out for an rfp anyway so um but then you you probably need to uh have a plumber stop by at some point in the process and and deal with um making sure everything's shut off okay and if you know one of the exclusions is uh, if there are, which I actually, you know, I'm not, I'm not aware of um, what's there or not, but I'm just, again, just things to think about. Either way, you're talking north of 140,000 um, to to demolish it, and then the good news is that when you're done, you have like a nice lot with with some got some hay and seed, and um, you can either hang on to it for a somewhat low holding costs, you got to mow it and um, shovel the sidewalk. Um, or you could sell it for, you, you know, you tell me what, but it's probably not more than 50,000 and not 20,000. Yeah. So um, somewhere in there. And so you're, you know, you, you've, the plan has to involve something that's going to pay for the difference. And I think it's a good good outcome for the neighborhood, good outcome for the city if we do that. Um, another option is that we pay uh, a lot for cleanouts. Just, you know, we we got uh, multiple cleanout quotes. Both of them for, were for people who are quoting us like four to 7,000 for cleanouts at other houses. So just so you know that this is not like just the premium cleanout person we got a quote from. Like, with you know these same people the, that quoted us this are are charging us kind of more reasonable 
rates it's for cause, housing. It's because they have to, they have to like build their way into the building, basically. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, like <laughs> toss stuff out of the third floor or um, yeah. and their attic. Yeah, I drove by it the other day and I looked at it. I was like, absolutely, I would. I do not want to go into that. <laughs> <laughs> Can't recommend it. Yeah. No, so but... then when we're done with that, I. I was putting this on here just as kind of a brainstorm, but you know, we we probably want to leave behind us a way to walk into the building and also shut it behind us and make sure um, we're leaving the window secure and stuff like that. So we're gonna do something to kind of secure that building so that you can walk up and down um, safely. Yeah. Um, so you know exactly what that costs. I'm not sure yet, but and then this this asbestos testing is is less than we've paid in the past but but right now the company we're working with they seem to the surveys come out around 3500 um and all that is basically obviously much less than 150,000 but you've you've just started your journey then you've um which you could you could sell yeah well you you know all the options you could go from there yeah. you could sell an empty building um or you could start to plan for renovation or you could decide that after all that you're going to knock it down anyway. So my, I mean, funny coming into this, hearing you talk, my immediate inclination without really thinking through the numbers was let's get rid of like, let's just do it. Let's just get rid of the building that people will, like the neighbors will be happy. And like, it'll be, it, it is ostensibly a part of our, like, I, I actually believe that like, we should probably do in addition to the development work, we should probably do some of like the traditional work of land banks. Um, um, uh, but it's funny looking at this now I with these numbers, I partially just, you know, even if we were to do the basic, the basic approach and just clean out, it, it, you know, we could still decide to build something there, and then at least we could finance the demo, um, right? I mean, am I, am I like say it again? We could at least at that point we could like if we were to do a a, a rent like a, a a new construction thing on the lot, even if we were to clean it out, we could we could include the demo in the financing. If well, <laughs> wait, you're would that assume that the that the value of what you're oh, what you, what you or, finish exceeds I the value mean, of what you spend on construction? I just assume it's a boatload of subsidy, not really that the value. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm struggling to figure out how we might finance construction on new vacant sites at this point. Yeah. Uh, there might be something, my hope is that something comes out of Third Avenue with all these kind of cool typologies that fit into different zoning lots and things like that, we might, we might come away with a few archetypes that we could use. So M Murray is what I was thinking when I sent you that, like that proposal, Mike, for that federal legislation that has not passed, <laughs> right, right, uh, right. Uh, um, uh, which is just like a, a new construction for like some kind of, like there's no program gotcha. for new construction that's, right. yeah. Um, and small scattered side infill stuff, especially. Yeah, I don't know. That's tough. I mean, there are other organizations that have done it, that have, you know, in, like, even, even, even Habitat is building, like, row houses in, uh, in, like, in, uh, in Detroit. I saw some photos of the row houses they built in Detroit. They, um, we, we, we built them on Scattered Site. We did 23 NYCHA homes, and we demoed seven. So yeah. we did new construction and baked it in. The, that was, I don't know if that ever got built frankly, because we looked at every modular company on the East Coast, of which I think there were six or seven, and the pricing just wasn't wasn't ever working out to make the financing work. Yeah. But we could look at that again, for sure, and see if things have changed. And the, I have the model somewhere for how we did it, what sources we used. I can't remember what we used. Then. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, also, one site is harder. <laughs> right, right, yeah. right. Maybe there's a, a local benefactor, uh, a new local benefactor who wants to have a showcase house built by the land bank. You know, maybe there's something crazy like that. I don't know. Or we can find, yeah, find a modular company that wants to finance a, a modular home for themselves as well, a model. Do you remember the, um, if concrete were a country, it would be the third largest country in the world conversation? That the, I don't remember that conversation, though. What, what was that oh, conversation? Uh, the bank, the lender on Legacy Cities, had been pushing a product called I call it Nexium, but I know that's not right. But it's the it's the <laughs> stop the it's recording. 
you, yeah, you, exactly. exactly. You did tell me. Sorry, you did, sorry, you broke up. There. <laughs> you did tell me that they were pushing some uh, a kind of shady looking, um, uh, <laughs> <laughs> a very untested product that is now was slated to be used in the uh, stations off of like eighty seven that they're building. I don't know what they're called. You know, like a Burger mm -hmm. King and West Stop and gas station. All of those are being rebuilt now with this material. Yeah, and so they had asked us if we had any infill properties to do a single family home using this product, we could revisit that for sure. But all that to say, that's a whole project for one house. And yeah. How much, how much time do we have? I think it would be cool to show people what the plans, what the new zoning code says they could build and sell it that way. Yeah. But they have to have the money. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, do you have an inclination on this? Should we, should we just reject? The problem is if we reject I, Murray, there's no path for it, for Murray. Right. Right. I spoke with the city this morning and it's been so long since they've done a demo that no one knows if they have any sample bids for what it cost the last time they did it, for example. Um, the, so my inclination is to wait, my recommendation would be, because there's also the component of the LBI2 funding needed to be expended by December 31st, 2024. And so when we get through the bidding on Legacy Cities 2, we'll know how much of that money we need. And if for some reason we still need to spend more money, demos are all an allowable use of funds under LBI too. So we could get to the end of the road with this. I, I, At no, what point no. will the city pressure you for an answer on this property? When the judicial action um, is produced or ruled yeah. upon or something that says, now we can sell you these buildings. And then they will say, okay, let's close on these buildings. My guess would be, by the end of the first quarter next year. So after we've bid out the work, but very close to when we've bid out the work. So uh -huh. It might be a real, real nail biter of a decision, but I don't believe I don't believe the city would then cause us to uh have to accelerate and say you have to make a decision by March 15th because we have another use for this. Uh -huh. I don't I don't believe that they have a better pathway than working with us currently. So we'll see. We'll be close. It'll be tight next year to, to get all these to line up. So it makes it fun. Okay. Well, I guess wait and see. Yeah. Yeah. The city will be conducting demo on the two North Street buildings. You may have read about that in the paper. We had rejected these, um, Aaron, back in April of 2021 because one was mm -hmm. basically underwater. They're both in a flood zone. And so those are two properties the city is demoing to put in a canoe launching site. Like 51 North Street and something like that. It, it's an interesting idea. The mayor's wife is spearheading the initiative, and I was actually talking to her about it at the, uh, the holiday event that we went to this week. Just, I, I think she's getting her arms around what it looks like, but they may have some recent you know, work and demo, and so they may be more well prepared to demo this. And we just say, okay, thank you. You know, we looked at it for a while. You're now experts in demolition, and we don't have the money. Is the city demoing it itself, those properties? I think it's I think no. it's contracting out to someone through its procurement policy. But yeah. We'll have some we'll have somebody will know how to demo something in yeah. Kingston and it'll either be us, the city, or both next year. Do that as our holiday party next year. Oh my god, so much <laughs> just hand out sledgehammers <laughs> and go to town. <laughs> I I, th I think Owen would make us sign waivers and wear masks. And no, <laughs> you can't. No, there's not enough waivers to <laughs> make me comfortable with that. St Stacy wouldn't let us in the building for insurance reasons. We'd have to we'd have some <laughs> <There's not enough. laughs> All right. uh, well I won't keep you guys. Thank you for, for giving me all Thanks the Thanks for your time. We'll see um, you soon. Yeah, I'll see you in the car. Right. See you in a bit. Thank all you. Right. Thanks, guys. Bye. Bye.